Bosnia Herzegovina wasn't peacekeeping, or Croatia, or Kosovo, or Somalia, or Mogadishu, or Rwanda. None of those are peacekeeping missions. They're war monitoring. And you're in it, baby. You're right in the middle of it. You smell it, you taste it, you feel it, you hear it, and you see it. There was no peacekeeping in Bosnia. This is not peacekeeping. This is humanitarian intervention. This is peacemaking. This is peace restoration. This is what we used to call war. If you ask the uh, Yugoslavians, uh, they were at war. We were in the middle of it. The Canadians were the, the only UN battalion group that was in all of Bosnia in that time in 1994 that had Canadian squadrons and companies deployed on the Serb side, the Croatian side, and the Muslim side. If you're in a sector where you're protecting the Croats, they'll be glad to have you there. The Serbs won't want you there. If you're in a sector where you're protecting the Serbs, the Croats won't want you there. But I've been in, I've been in all of them. During my three tours, I, I had the chance to be in, the, in a Serb, a Croat, and a Muslim sector. And it doesn't matter where you are, the guy on the other side, he's not gonna like you because you're preventing him from getting what he wants. We had been trained to close with and destroy, either adopt a defensive position or attack. And here, we were, uh, we were not at war, but we were in, in war. There's a constant level of fear all the time, and as you go through more stressful situations, it gets higher and higher. And the times I was truly afraid was not when I was out getting shot at or, you know, under machine gun fire. It was when I was laying in my cot at night, you know, and it's dark and everyone else is sleeping, and, and that's when it catches up to you, and you kind of get the sweats and you get the shakes and you can't sleep, and you know, your mind starts turning over and over the incidents and wondering, you know, what am I facing tomorrow? And, and that's the hardest kind of fear to defeat. You can get rid of some of your, your fear by fighting back. We put our people into situations frequently where they have to take fire, but in the case of artillery fire, you don't know where it's coming from, or mortar fire, you can't fire back. Certainly, there's nothing more fearful than being in a bunker waiting for the one that's going to penetrate and come in and explode. Common sense is, is the operating fundamental of an army. If you have common sense, you can accomplish anything. Mackenzie, unlike most officers, senior officers, seemed to be abundantly full of common sense, and he would look at a situation and find a soldier's solution rather than a political solution or, you know, the textbook solution. There was sniping going on, and, uh, and certainly our people reacted uh, properly. Although the numbers are classified, I would say that there's uh, a lot of Serbs and Muslims who never survived to the end of our time in Sarajevo. Once again, we weren't supposed to talk about that in public back then, but it's well known that our snipers, weren't allowed to call them snipers, that had a pejorative term or connotation over there, so the sharpshooters engaged those that were shooting at them and killed them. And that's counter-sniper work, which is totally against the rules of engagement, totally against you know, the way the United Nations had sent us there in a Chapter 6 role, but it was a matter of you know, needs of the moment to save Canadian lives because People back home just weren't paying attention to how dangerous it was. Soldiers need to feel a sense of accomplishment. If they're going to take those particular risks, take themselves away from their families, they have to understand that there's, or they have to have a feeling that, that it's for some good, for some greater good. And it's, and it's got nothing to do with monetary issues or their pay or anything like that. It's personal, satis personal satisfaction that the risks were worthwhile. And everyone who was going over was putting their, their life on the line. The kids would all gather around the vehicles when we were stopped in the town and we had little Canada pins and bubble gum. We would go out and buy tons of bubble gum and we'd give it to the kids. Well, there was always a big crowd of boys and I remember this one day there was a little girl, she was maybe eight or ten years old, standing in the back. And I'd handed out almost all of my Canada pins and I saw her standing there and I could see she couldn't get through so I, I told the, the young boys to get back and I waved her forward and I gave her this pin and she immediately just ran away. And I thought, oh, okay, well, whatever. 
She came back just as we were about to pull out of town. She came running down the street yelling at us because our vehicle was starting to pull away. I, I told my driver, listen, hold on a sec. She ran up and she gave me a white rose. And I was floored. <laughs> there were tears in my eyes. Still breaks me up. But uh, what kills me now is that I know she died when the Croats attacked. 